Ladies and gentlemen, we have detected gravitational waves. We did it. I am so pleased to be able to tell you that. So these gravitational waves were produced by two colliding black holes that came together, merged to form a single black hole about 1.3 billion years ago. They were detected by LIGO, the Laser Interferometer Gravitational Wave Observatory. LIGO is the most precise measuring device ever built. So I'm Mike Landry, and I'm a detection lead scientist here at LIGO Hanford. And we're here for the announcement of the detection of gravitational waves. For the first time, people have directly detected gravitational waves here at Earth. And in this case, it's due to the merger of a pair of black holes. Early in the morning of September 14th, uh, 2.50 local time, 2.50 in the morning in, in Hanford, uh, two, two hours at, at 4.50 in Livingston. We registered this coincident gravitational wave signal from the merger of two black holes. And that was detected online through codes within three minutes. And then a few tens of minutes after that, uh, some postdocs at uh, the AEI, Albert Einstein Institute in Germany, uh, noted that there was a, an event which looked real. Now, from their perspective, it could have been one of our test signals that we inject. We regularly inject test signals, uh, so waveforms that are from binary black holes or binary neutron stars in order to test our system, they're from end-to-end -end check on the interferometer and the data quality and the analysis. And so they thought this is probably an injection. I woke up at five in the morning and read my email. I'm an early riser. I found this email, very interesting event, uh, looked at it and thought, wow, that's so good. It's probably an injection. And so I drove into the lab and cornered our uh, injector uh, at the site and asked, you know, sometimes we, we make these injections blind so that the, the collaboration doesn't know and it's a test. Uh, I asked if that was, uh, we're in such a phase. You, you formally can't ask if someone's put a blind injection on the front, but you can sure ask, are we in the blind injection phase? And we weren't. And so at that point, it became a serious thing. This is not something that we've injected. So we have a, a rapid response team designated and we uh, started that process, looking at the data, looking at the timing, looking at the coupling from the environment. And that process was a multi-month process by which the collaboration as a whole vetted this event, excluded the possibility that it was anything other than an astrophysical event, and then wrote a paper, went through peer review, and led to the announcement, a long, arduous process. The entire collaboration uh, was alerted to this event on the first day and and people uh, began their follow-up and and it's a gradual process of becoming more and more confident with it there was a, sort of not a eureka moment where you say yeah this is absolutely it you have to go through a series of steps to get to that point and you know extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof and so the extraordinary proof was months and months of analysis frankly Hi, uh, my name is Fred Robb. I'm the head of LIGO Hanford Observatory. And today we announced uh, a historic discovery. The first time gravitational waves have been detected at Earth. And uh, the, the detection of uh, the gravitational waves tells us that they were created uh, approximately 1.3 billion years ago by a titanic explosion in which uh, two black holes merged at nearly the speed of light to form a more massive black hole. Right, we were just stabilizing the device and uh, of course when you have a measuring instrument uh, you turn it on you can't tell it not to measure things uh, and uh, we were in the process of just getting ready uh, to have all our systems for alerting astronomers if we found something uh, all, all ready and online 
And uh, at that particular point, as we were getting into these final stages, uh, planning to start the run in a few days, uh, we got the signal. And so approximately three minutes after the gravitational wave came through, uh, it was detected both in Louisiana, where our sister observatory is, and here in Washington. And uh, uh, the Louisiana people tell me, I have to say, they got it first. It was seven milliseconds ahead in Louisiana, which told us that it was a source that was roughly in the southern hemisphere sky. And uh, basically, within three minutes was the, the first, uh, what we call a trigger, the first time one of our computer codes said, hey, look at this. It's really a global... Uh, collaborative process and and yes luck's involved uh, luck is involved we believe that the earth is being um, you know flooded with gravitational waves constantly but to ha but the, many of the, those sources we won't be able to see because they're below the noise level of our detector so they have to be we're looking for loud sources that peak above the noise floor of our detector so within really within two days of achieving uh, our observing mode of the interferometer, uh, we you know, received this loud signal. So that's the, the luck part of it. Uh, now, we froze the configuration for 38 days and that without, you know, without uh, changing uh, anything on the detectors in order to establish that we understood the backgrounds. Uh, so the fact that it occurred early in the run is just one of those chance things. You know, you don't say, hey, look at that, the signal came in the middle of the run. Well, isn't that crazy? You know, the fact that it occurred in the, at, the, at the outset is just chance. From, you know, all the astronomy that we're able to do with tools that study one or another form of electromagnetism. So optical, x-ray, you know, low frequency radio waves, regular radio telescopes. And uh, the best understood source would be the merger of two neutron stars to form a black hole. Now that's the best we know from uh, electromagnetic astronomy and we know the rate at Earth of events of the strength we could see to only within a factor of about a thousand. Okay, but that is what we built everything on. And so when we designed this series of runs back in 2012 and 2013, uh, what we uh, referred to this as this first run uh, with, you know, with its target sensitivity, which we were able to achieve, uh, when it was introduced, the woman who gave the talk referred to it as the we might get lucky run. Okay, uh, we of course knew that uh, black hole collisions would give much, much stronger signals and there had been predictions that even the initial LIGO detector should have been seeing these at a rate of about a few a year. Uh, but the point is because of the tremendous uncertainty, uh, you know, what we're observing, this is the first time anybody's observed black holes with masses on the order of 30 solar masses. The ones that have been discovered, and there are only, you know, about a dozen, 20 uh, uh, black holes that people are confident of, these typically uh, have uh, masses between five and 15 or 20, and, uh, and uh, you know, they're quite rare in terms of the ones people know about uh, from electromagnetic astronomy because, of course, black holes are black, so they're hard to see. Uh, and so, uh, you know, we knew that these signals would be big. We knew that you could see them very, very far away, uh, but uh, we didn't know if the sources actually existed that would produce them. And so now we know. And so now, you know, that totally revolutionizes uh, our expectations of what we can see. So people are now feverishly working on tuning the detectors up to the marks uh, that we had set out back in that 2012-2013 time frame for opening the second science run, the second observing run with LIGO. Uh, and that uh, would be a significant boost in sensitivity where we expect we might be seeing events like this uh, several a month. So I, I'm sure that some of the old timers who have been working on LIGO for decades and fought the initial fights to get funding feel that vindication. Myself, I've worked for uh, LIGO on LIGO for 16 years. 
And honestly, I, I think I've sensed mostly, you know, excitement about the possibility, some frustration that it's taken a long time using large scale detectors. Uh, to, to find the source, this source, and future sources. We expect you know, the array of these uh, events. Uh, but I, I, I don't feel that deeply, that sense of vindication. I we were always optimistic that we would find something, and, and now it's come to fruition. This is not just about the detection of gravitational waves. That's the story today. But what's really exciting is what comes next. Right, it's 400 years ago, Galileo turned a telescope to the sky and opened the era of modern observational astronomy. I think we're doing something equally important here today. I think we're opening a window on the universe, the window of gravitational wave astronomy.